Hi guys, it's me, it's my life, and I'm back with another video update about my hair care journey. Um, so I'm not gonna go through the whole spiel of the story. If you go back and watch um my previous videos, my previous videos will explain to you the reason why I chose to start taking care of my own hair and um all of that so what i am going to begin with is an update this video is long 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 overdue and i will let you know that i began my hair journey um in october of 2014 now it is july 2015 so it was a couple of months ago when i decided to start taking care of my own hair but you guys I had a major 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 setback the one thing that hair does not like is stress if you put too much stress on it if you're not taking care of it um, a number of things can cause your hair to set back it'll stunt the growth stop it from growing, cause it thin out, fall out, whatever. Well, I had all of the above. Um, and I was doing good. I was doing pretty good up until February of this year, 2015. Well, in January, I did an absolute no-no. I'm not natural. To let you guys know I'm not natural and I don't plan on going natural in the near future um but right now I am this is my virgin hair with no perm in it and I'll tell you why in a in a in a little bit so I put a texturizer in permed previously permed hair absolutely the worst mistake somebody with a perm could ever do to themselves I learned that you do not put a texturizer in permed hair I don't care how long you've been without a perm whatever if your perm haven't grown out 100% in this 100% virgin hair you do not texturize your hair with a texturizer. You don't do that. A texturizer and a perm, they are not the same. They don't do the same things. They actually clash because for whatever reason, the chemicals and the chemistry of your hair don't mix with it. Well, I didn't know that. I'm like, a perm is a perm. Um, I hadn't done my research on it. So, that's mistake number one where I messed up. Well, nothing happened right off. I put the texturizer in my hair and it, sh it did what it needed to do for me for a few weeks. So, I put the texturizer in like that February. Maybe, I'm going to say maybe two and a half weeks, three weeks later. You can you can see that the texturizer was not um it was wearing off and so my hair started to revert back to the new growth the new growth stage when you know you need to put a perm in your hair. That's mistake number one. What I learned about my hair is I cannot go longer than three months without a perm um i've been with a perm so long that if i go to if i go longer than three months my hair begin it is you know it, it looked like it got to the point to where it wanted to start breaking dry brittle that kind of stuff you know your hair go through whenever it's time for a perm and i had a lot of healthy new growth but my ends started splitting it didn't matter how much I moisturized and sealed my ends. It wasn't happening. Um, 
it wanted a perm. The second mistake that I made was putting a, a color in my hair. Now, I knew better because I wear color. I color. I've been coloring my hair for years. Color has never damaged my hair. Did anything to it because I know how to take care of my hair once I put color in it. But me being on this journey and learning, I made some mistakes along the way. So I got a color from my local Dollar Tree. Absolutely not because it was not for African American hair. So the chemicals in it was way, way stronger than what the chemicals in an African American color are. And when I opened the box and mixed it, it has the stench of peroxide, ammonia was so strong it had the whole entire room lit up like a chemical plant or something it was just that strong that was indication number one red flag number one for me i should have threw it away right then and there but no i say well maybe that's just you know how it is or whatever which I had never smelled a box perm, I'm sorry, a box color that strong when you when you mixed everything together. And it came in a box with all the regular little stuff and I followed the directions and did everything I was supposed to do. Um, was a recipe for disaster that I did not know was going to be. It was some kind of ugly, sandy, brown kind of, it was ugly. It was horrible. It wasn't, it was supposed to be blonde, but it wasn't blonde. It was some horrible color. It was a horrible, horrible dollar store box color. It was horrible. So, anyway, needless to say, I still was hungry. My hair was still hungry for the perm. It still was looking for the perm. Well, I know that you wait about four to six weeks, sometimes two months if you have to, before you put a perm on your hair otherwise you ain't gonna have none and guess what when i put that that color in my hair i did a video on it so if you go back and look at the video you will see why i'm in a video explaining to you that you don't put a color in your hair and then go right behind it and put a perm in it so i knew better i did a video for you guys on it but I didn't go right back, like absolutely behind it and, and did it. I waited a week. A week wasn't long enough. I figured since the texturizer was um was wearing out. It was um it had been a week or so since I had put the color in. And my hair still was hungry for the perm. I went and bought my perm. Mm. I started putting that perm in my sky. I mean, I prepped it. I had combined all these different chemicals in my head within weeks of each other. And... The pH balance in my hair was so high till the normal pH balance for my hair couldn't balance out 
the chemicals that I was putting in because everything was just clashing, clashing, clashing. And like I said, no, none of my hair was coming out, but it was like an underlying problem. So in actuality, what I should have did was waited about a month, another month or so before putting that perm in my hair. I started putting the perm in and I had my hair parted in the four sections and sectioned off with the clips. So I put the first section in on this side. Then I moved on to the next section. By the time I got to the third section, this whole all of this, I'm going to show you, all of this area, all the way down to the back, all of that, my hair had just melted. It started melting off of my scalp. It was coming out like mesh. Just My hair was just coming out. It was melting. Um... And I didn't know that until I started to go back and work the perm in. Work it in, all right. It was too late. My hair, my entire head of hair had fallen out. I was completely bald-headed. I had sections of hair. I looked like a cancer patient because I had parts of my hair where the perm didn't affect it and it was hanging on but it was real real damaged so I had a little piece of hair that was about this long right here all of this was gone all of this was gone all of that was gone I had a little piece of hair right here that was still hanging on damaged uh, everything was gone and all this in a bag. Let me see if I can turn around and show you guys. Let's see, I don't know if you guys can see, but from here to here was thin, thin, thin hair that was breaking and falling out, and all, all of that, everything. I was bald headed, no hair. I went from shoulder length hair to absolutely bow headed now to this so I'm a, I am going to show you guys some pictures and I'm going to warn you some of them are really hard to look at because when your hair is your pride it your hair is what defines you. Some people, um, you know, feel like that their hair is all, is, is everything. Like when they look in the mirror and their hair on point, that's, that makes their entire day. Well, my hair is my pride. And I didn't, I didn't want short hair. I wanted my hair to grow. I wanted to see how long I can get my hair to grow. So I set myself back um, for a lot of months, but um, in the next couple of clips, I'm going to show you what my hair um, looked like immediately after I um, rinsed it out, rinsed out the perm and everything and the damage that was left to it. 